New leadership at Sandag is bringing about change to long-held committee assignments. Joining us now to discuss the transition is City of El Cajon Mayor Bill Wells. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. Okay, so we're we're discussing new committee assignments for Sandag, but first, just to, to give the scope, can you explain how many members of Sandag there are and how those <laughs> officials are are part of Sandag? Yeah, Sandag is the San Diego Association of Governments. It's a body that's meant to bring the 18 different municipalities of the San Diego County region together to spend transportation money. Um, there's about a $1.4 billion budget, and every year the cities get together and decide <clears throat> whether that money should be spent on freeways or roads or or uh, trolleys or bike lanes, and that's uh, been the way it's been for about 30 years. I've been on San Diego for about eight years, and it's generally a bipartisan type of uh, group by nature because the different uh, regions are not all mm -hmm. the same demographic makeup, but it's changed a bit now. Right. As, as over time, as different elected officials uh change hand and, and and therefore could change party. Uh, the makeup might be a little different. You found a particular objection to committee assignments uh, from the new chair, meaning that uh, different members of SANDAG are appointed to certain committees. You had been on the audit committee. Uh, you wrote that you were very disappointed in the recommendations for the committee assignments and that no Republicans were recommended. Can you explain your objection? Well, you, you said it exactly right. Um, this is a regional body. It should be representation of all the different people that pay taxes. And believe me, every city, all the citizens pay a sales tax called Transnet, which goes towards paying for all of the different projects. So everybody should be represented. But that's not the way it's shaking out this year. Uh, there's a purge of all conservative voices from the, from the, uh, uh, the body, which in some ways is their right to do, but it's very unusual. Um, Sandag has taken pride in being bipartisan and letting all the voices be heard. But now there is a one voice, which is a fairly hard left uh, voice, which is trying to erase all conservative voices. And I think it's a bad idea for policy. I think it's a bad idea for representation of the taxpayers. And I think it's a bad idea because they're going to be asking uh, our region to come up with $177 billion for this uh, five big moves that they've got planned. And that means uh, metered lanes, it means tax increases, and all of these things people should be very wary of if uh, they're not being represented. You went on uh, with some s stronger language uh, in, in your uh, written objection to the chair saying this scorched earth policy may play well to yeah. your radical base, but it has no place in a regional body, w which you just explained. Can can you talk about uh, the response that we received later from chairwoman, uh, the, the mayor of Encinitas, Catherine Blakespear, who said that there are Republicans on committees and that... Uh, she went on to say that you didn't show a strong level of engagement when you were on the audit committee. Do you care to respond? Well, you know, when I was on the audit committee, um, I was actually going to get off. And the, the person who runs the audit committee, uh, the audit department, asked me to stay on. They thought that I was vital to uh, a healthy movement uh, of the audit committee. But, you know, it's this is not to be... Uh, not surprising. Uh, when when people want to get rid of you, they they find excuses. Um, but I, I I'm not so worried about me. I think the bigger problem is that I don't see any Republicans in any of the chairman positions or the vice chair positions throughout the entire organization. And there's a lot of positions, and they've even gone as far as to change the bylaws. Um, they've some of these uh, positions require three years experience, but they've changed the bylaws so that. Uh, new members of the of the committee, new liberal members of the committee can take seats, uh, pushing older committee members and more experienced committee members off. And I want to make it clear, it, it doesn't bother me personally. I, I don't really care at all about that. What bothers me is the, the movement towards no representation for a conservative voice. And there's lots of conservative voices in the county of San Diego. Well, it seems to speak to, uh, critics could say, a, a larger political divide that, that we're seeing. Do you think, uh, quickly in the short time we have left, that, that there is uh, 
hope for uh, more collaboration and, <clears throat> and compromise within SANDAG? Because it seems it's been more and more heated every year. You know, I sure hope so. Um, it, SANDAG seems to be at a complete standstill. Uh, nothing's getting done. Uh, it's, it's not anywhere near what the body was three or four years ago. Um, I know they're going to come back and ask for huge tax increases, metered lanes, and all kinds of other things that they're going to want everybody to pay for. And I hope that they realize that if they want everybody to pay for it, they need to give everybody a seat at the table. All right. Mayor Bill Wells, El Cajon, as always, thank you so much for your time and uh, your voice this morning. Appreciate it.